in the last session we were discussing and understanding the dispassion and uh, we discussed about attachment and detachment so when we understand that attachment and detachment then it is easy for us to go beyond that attachment and detachment that results into dispassion we have become so much uh, habitual and mechanical getting attached but if you closely observe attachment or detachment there is a sense of discomfort within me at i'm always at unease i'm attached to the honey so my eyes goes there where she goes to whom she meets oh she was laughing with that guy you know i feel a sense of discomfort and unease only because i am attached love makes you free and before this passion we have understood discernment that is very important a clarity understanding we are given an intellect by the existence and if we do not follow this understanding and clarity this life is going to push you back with the discomfort with this insecurity with the fear with the anxiety with the duality and a conflict so in that state we cannot discover our real nature that is our goal that's why we are becoming a seeker i think before that session we understood that discernment gives you the right knowledge and dispassion triggers to change your behavior so we bridge the gap between the knowledge and the behavior and that changes our personality and whatever is left we take over by the six treasures so right knowledge by discernment so what happens as you practice inside your head during the day that discernment settles your intellect in the word we use the word shreyas what is right and good i meet you attachment comes and now but the intellect is settled in the shreyas shreyas says what is right and good so i move towards you with affection one of the greatest master j krishna murti who is no more now who used the word am i responsible to you so if you look into the meaning of responsibility in dictionary it means to respond and to respond means to move with affection not with attachment so now you have changed your behavior are you getting it so shreyas means what is right and good and after that comes the dispassion and when we live into that discernment and dispassion no one can ever disturb you that is one of the most precious gift we get by the these two steps and it is a knowledge practice you can do it all the time everywhere in all your relationship in your business in your personal life in your professional life in your social life in your social life so that makes you helps you to become a seeker do you still remember when i said there is a simple inquiry and there is a self inquiry 
the self-inquiry with discernment helps me to eliminate those elements which causes fear, insecurity, duality, and a conflict. So we should also understand this absence of dispassion leads to confusion. When there is a confusion, it means I know. That's why you say I know, I understand, and still I am crying, I am suffering. So, big gap. So there is another issue that we should understand. First, understand what is happy self and unhappy self. <laughs> you see that happy self, you wake up in the morning, you are fully busy, you have a lot of things to do. <laughs> I don't know, Brandy, that was the natural topic today. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> Now, Brandy told me I'm a little bit busy today. <laughs> so, so you see that when I wake up in the morning, here comes Lara. So, when I wake up in the morning, I wake up to the world outside. What my mind says, am I happy self or am I unhappy self? Are you understanding that? So now I'm unhappy self, then I have to do a lot of things in my life to become happy self. Natural, we feel natural <laughs> action. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? So I am unhappy self. Why? Now first, uh, we are applying the discernment. If uh, you don't apply the discernment, you don't have a right knowledge, right understanding, and then the behavior will take over you. Habit will take over you. And what is the behavior and habit? We have been repeating it days after days, weeks after weeks, months after months, years after years, and expecting a different result. Did you understand? That is what the behavior is. So now, now understand, when I am unhappy self, what exactly I do to remove unhappy self? And that will give you a clarity. Example. Oh, Lara has not been talking to me for a couple of weeks. Let me call her. She doesn't respond. She might be busy. No, example. Lara, this is only an example. So you see that? What I do, pay attention to it. Once you understand clearly what I do to remove unhappy self, whether my doing increases unhappiness or it really decreases. Are you getting it? Now we are going a little deeper and deeper. Unhappy self. First thing, I have to do a lot of things in my life. I have a lot of thoughts in my mind. And they basically are concerned about first thing, to earn something and to receive a pleasure from the world that will make me happy self. We forget everything. I believe I'm making you understand. So when there is an unhappy self, I want to excite myself. I want to escape myself from the reality. 
and I want to run in my life, that increases more and more of unhappy self. We don't pay attention to remove that unhappy self, but we find a different medium, maybe a wealth, maybe a food, maybe a drink, maybe buying something new to remove that unhappy self. But where is the unhappy self? Is it inside or outside? It is inside me. I cannot use any means and object to remove that unhappy self in me. Did you get it? So my focus should be to find out what is this unhappy self and you will find out what you will find out. This mind is scattered in millions of directions to achieve, to possess, to own something outside, to remove the unhappy self. Find out in your life. Every day you will find this. Then you are not settled in yourself. The unhappy self continues. It continues to disturb. It, it creates a set pattern. It creates a behavior. And that behavior leads to attachment. What we were talking, we were talking about dispassion. Dispassion is beyond attachment and detachment. Are you getting it? So absence of dispassion leads to unhappy self. That is the result. Absence of dispassion, we have already clearly understood. So how you uh, treat unhappy self, you wake up in the morning, you meet someone, you have certain thoughts, examine, be mindful, and check. Oh, it is because of absence of dispassion that there is an unhappy self in myself. That is how you express. Do you remember how you express? You have already expressed before me. Oh, today is a good morning. <laughs> today is a good day. <laughs> you see, it is your behavior, absence of dispassion. Did the sun rise today in a different way than yesterday? It is the same thing. It is the unhappy self that is why today is not a good day. So, the first thing to be very clear that unhappy self is within me it cannot be removed. Now I have to go slowly. I have to change my expression so that you get the maximum with less explanation as we are becoming a seeker. Unhappy self is within me. I have to remove this unhappy self. Now can you find out the cause of this unhappy self? The root cause is a sense of fear because I do not belong to you. And you do not belong to me. It may be an object or a person or a thing or in relationship, whatever you see. That belongingness creates a sense of owning and possessiveness. And that possessiveness in the mind leads to a set pattern of behavior. Go back again. I have to remove the unhappy self which is within me. It is due to some fear, some sense of insecurity, some sense of anxiety is there. And as long as this unhappy self lives with me, it is a 
clear indication that there is an absence of this passion. And there is a sense of possessiveness. I want to make it clear, the sense of possessiveness. Do I possess the space in this room? <laughs> Do you possess the space in your room? You cannot possess space. You cannot possess love. The moment you have a possessiveness, you have an attachment or detachment, and it creates an unhappy self. Love is like a space. Every student of my master used to say, a couple of them are here, used to say that my master loves me much more than you. Everyone, including me. Do you see the difference between non-possessiveness and love? So what happens, one of the most beautiful th thing happens that by the practice of dispassion, I become responsible. Responsible means to respond. To respond means to move with affection, not with attachment. You live in dispassion. And when you live in dispassion, the happy self reveals itself. Happy self reveals itself. That is the beauty. Look at the beautiful beauty of the learning. What happens then the mind becomes pure, intellect becomes mature when we live and work in my personal, professional, social, family lives. And that begins the journey of the real self. Then it is, becomes easy to get absorbed into the state of meditation. And the happy self is within me. I find my happy self. So when the mind is not mature, leads to ignorance. Ignorance causes the suffering. Why the mind is not mature? Because it lives in passion. Why, what is passion? A sense of possessiveness in my mind. So now another topic should be associated with it. So, okay, should I, what are the, what is the purpose of my life? Now see, um, every human being, uh, the one purpose of life is to be active and to earn, for example, earn wealth, name, fame. That is what comes into the first category. So now I have earned wealth, name, and the fame. What is the second? To enjoy that what I have earned, a sense of pleasure. That is the second goal. Ah, that is the second goal. Third goal, we should always keep in mind that whatever the pleasure we enjoy and the wealth in the in the form of immovable, movable assets, prestige and recognition should be disciplined by ethics, the social law. What's a, whatever you say, the moral law, that is why we teach yama and yama in yoga. Huh? Those who are teachers, they are aware. So these are the three basic goals of human life. The moment you deviate from it means absence of dispassion. The moment you deviate from it, absence of discernment. The fourth goal is the prime goal. That is 
to get moksha, to get nirvana, or whatever I say, to discover your real nature. Why to discover my real nature? I have already answered. Do you remember? Do you love peace? <laughs> yes. Peace is my nature. Do I love happiness? Happiness is my nature. If I love happiness, if I don't love, there may be, then you are an extraordinary human being because you don't love happiness. You see, so the life existence indicates the final goal, the fourth goal. The purpose of the human life is to discover the self and allow that self to express in personal, professional, social, family lives. Why? Now the happy self is expressing everywhere. So we are not leaving anything like externally, but we are changing the perception with the right knowledge that is discernment followed by a dispassion so that the knowledge and the, and the behavior, they both bridge their gap. So now the behavior becomes the knowledge. That knowledge expresses in thought, speech and action why we do that? We have already understood. I'm not going to repeat. Pleasure is temporary happiness. Mind is confused. That happiness is outside. Do you remember the example of a mirror? Sun reflects the light into the room. Do you remember? So all pleasures from the world outside is nothing but a reflected happiness that is already present in me. Are you understanding that? Uh, we did talk about this. Uh, let me recall for a minute and help you pick up that. I eat pasta, it gives me happiness. But on the other hand, I understand that the pasta does not contain an element of happiness. But the fact is, I enjoy, I feel the pleasure. The next question comes from where the pleasure comes. So I gave an example of a mirror. You open your main door, the sun is there. You take a mirror and the sunlight, what happens? Sunlight reflects in the mirror and enters into your room and you see the sunlight. You see that here is the sunlight, but the sunlight is not there. It is a reflected sunlight. Same way the happiness in me is reflected in the pasta. That gives me happiness. That feels like that as if the happiness is there in the pasta, the happiness is there in the object, happiness is there in the wealth, happiness is there in the house, happiness is there. But what is the catch here? That happiness depends on my attachment. And there comes the discussion. What is that attachment? How do you say? You say, I like pasta, that's why I feel pleasure. What is liking? Liking is attachment. So in the attachment, you have missed. What did you miss? This passion. Did you get it? So see that entire journey to become a seeker is all about understanding. Understanding? Through the understanding and clarity, we change our behavior. The behavior is located in the mind. 
which is normally repetitive, habitual, instinctive, impulsive. It carries millions and millions of impressions. Uh, in Sanskrit, we talk, we talk about sanskaras, sanskaras, vasanas. So the pressure of the knowledge that is kept in the head, that is what the power of the discernment, that gradually changes our behavior. An absence of passion makes us sure that happy self lies inside. And I must pursue this goal to find my real self, to live in permanent peace, happiness, love, and wisdom. So do you leave people? Do you leave? stop eating pasta? No. You have the resources. You can afford it. You eat pasta. But the discernment and dispassion is already present in the mind. It does not lead you to any kind of attachment. Even if you don't eat pasta today, you are still happy. You get a sense of independence. Do you see? What is independence is what the freedom is. Are you getting it? Look at it. How clear the understanding is, we miss these beautiful teachings of our great masters. And then we challenge these principles. We challenge yoga, we challenge meditation, that, oh, where it is. Conclusion is, then we will start happy self, is it outside? It is not outside. Why I feel outside? Because I'm in passion. Why I'm in passion? Because of my attachment and detachment. What is this? Ah, this leads me to ignorance. And then there is an absence of discernment. So you see that connect all the dots together. So when you connect all the dots together, the intellect always exerts the pressure while living day-to-day -day life. And when you live your life from moment to moment, that is one way to say that you are living in a present moment. Simply saying, I'm, I live in the present moment, even though I have a lot of stress, I am fully busy, I live in the present. What, what it means? I'm not opening up that, you know, you know that. I'm very busy, but I live in the present. I have a lot of stress, I live in the present. I'm mindful of the stress. I like pasta, now mindful eating. You have to examine, I'm not saying anything. So when you scrutinize and screen on the basis of discernment and dispassion, you realize that is the problem. And the problem is my confusion. Remove the confusion. You see, the meditation is always successful. So let us start our practice again with happy self and unhappy self. That choice is yours.